isn't what you think, Batman. I don't care who this guy is. We're gonna get out of this. You will never win. We both just have to lose. Peyton Reed, you are the director of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. It's amazing to get to talk to you. Well, thank you, nice having you. So, my first question uh, it has a little bit of background to it. You are one of only four directors who have helmed three or more MCU movies and one of only three directors who have their own hero trilogy in the MCU. How do you feel about that? Listen, I when we when we made the first Ant-Man, when we started shooting it in 2014, uh, I think in the back of your head, you're always like, oh, it'd be cool to do a trilogy of movies. We grew up on trilogies. And now we're, we're sitting here about to release Quantumania and we've, we've made a trilogy. Uh, it's really gratifying because we got to introduce and then progress these characters, Scott and Hope, Hank, Janet, and now Cassie as a hero. Uh, it's really gratifying, right? And also that Scott Lang was sort of, you know, an outsider at the beginning of, of that whole cycle. And now in Quantumania, here he is, He's front and center with, with Hope, and they're the first Avengers who are facing off against Kang the Conqueror, right? Who's one of the all-timer Marvel villains in the comics realm. So to be able to like create Kang for the MCU was, was a thrill. You're an interesting man. Scott Lang. Um, I don't know who you are, but you've made a big mistake, okay? <laughs> I'm an Avenger. I've called the other Avengers. You're an Avenger? Have I killed you before? <laughs> what? You utilized our expanded aspect ratio. Could you talk a little bit about that process and specifically how you went about using it in this film? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. We, we shot little bits of, of the other movie with IMAX, but this one we, we really like, part of what we wanted to do is take the audience down into the quantum realm and make it immersive. So we thought a lot more, even in the writing phase, about when these transitions are gonna happen. Uh, there's a major transition, you know, obviously as they, get sucked in in the basement they get sucked into the device and then bang you know we want to just assault the audience like you're in it now man you're, there's no going back you're in the quantum realm that was really fun to design and also just take advantage of that aspect ratio and really make it as big and as immersive as possible uh and then maybe one of my favorite transitions is well i can't spoil this can i spoil this is this for later i can't we use a uh we do we, we do a little thing that's sort of a, a, an IMAX curtain roll uh, to introduce uh, an appearance of one of our characters later in the movie. And that was really fun because that was something where we, we took the IMAX format and we really are overt about it. And we say, okay, here we go. We're shifting into this thing. Um, to me, uh, at a time when movies are, you know, trying to get people back in movie theaters and remind people, and I don't know if it takes much reminding, but movies, you know, are a communal experience. Like, when you're there, it's one thing to watch a movie at home. It's a whole other thing to watch a movie surrounded by friends, family, or complete strangers in a room, and you're all there looking at a big screen, and you're in it together, particularly for a comedy. As someone who came up in the comedy world and doing comedy films, and there's comedy, obviously, in the Ant-Man movies, to hear the progression of laughter is the greatest thing ever. And to share that laughter with people you've never met, like that's something that the movies do that it's a rare opportunity, right? That to be told a story in a, in a grand format. And IMAX to me, like from the very first time I ever entered an IMAX theater, it's like, okay, this is, this is it, man. It's, it's bigger and it's more vibrant. And now to be able to shoot in that format, you know, for me as a director, that's, that's it, right? Cause you, you, you can't recreate that at home. I literally don't think I could have said it any better than that. So yeah. I'm never going to try. Like I'm that. coming to work right next. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> um, I'm going to switch to some, some uh, they may seem random, but they're a little fun, right? So sure. you, as a film lover, yeah. um, what would be one movie, if you could experience it all over again for the first time in IMAX, what would that be? 
Well, I'll answer this question because I did experience all over the first time. And it was a handful of years ago when IMAX re-released The Wizard of Oz <clears throat> in 3D. And I, I was someone who grew up watching The Wizard of Oz on TV uh, for years. And I'd seen it projected, you know, in a theater in Los Angeles. But when IMAX redid it and did it in 3D, it was a revelation, man. And it really took a movie that was made in 1939 and made it come alive in whatever year that was. It's probably been 10, 15 years ago now. But like, that was something where it's like, well, this is an interesting use of it because we're making new movies and doing all these amazing visual effects. But to take that movie from 1939 and reinvent it for IMAX, it was a whole nother piece of art, right? It, it really recontextualized that movie. And I thought going in, uh, you'll forgive me for saying this, like, well, this is gonna be kind of gimmicky, whatever. And it was not. It was like, it was, it was taking that movie and it made it feel really contemporary. And that would be a cool thing to see, like taking even more of those older movies and reminding younger audiences, particularly, like um, there is a, there's a lasting quality to these movies. Wizard of Oz, you know, oh, this is a dusty old movie that my grandparents saw. But if you see it in IMAX in 3D, it's like, well, this is a new work of art, man. This is amazing. And, and I, that is one of the many things I love about IMAX. Preach. I would, I would die to see that in IMAX again. It's great, um, man. I just saw Interstellar the other day. Absolutely. Another yeah. one. Yeah. Just, wow. You know, like uh, Dunkirk in IMAX, like that stuff is just like, you know, you're there. <laughs> I'm running out of time, so I want to do one little game with you, okay? Yep. It's a, it's an ant-focused game. So basically, I'm going to ask you a few ant-focused trivia questions, and I want you to tell me if it's true or false. Okay, let's go. Okay. First one. The bullet ant is said to have the most powerful sting in the world. Yes. Ding, ding, ding. That's correct. It's number four on the Schmidt Pain Index. Wow. I. That's the highest. That... Okay, I'm gonna keep going and we're gonna come back yep. to this. There are over 12,000 ant species in the world. More than how many? More than 12,000. Oh yeah, way more. Okay, you're two for two. Better than I did. Um, third question, an ant can carry 10 times its own body weight. Yes, at least. I'm gonna give it to you because it's a trick question. It's actually 50. So I was yeah. trying to get you on that one. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Last question, there are ants in Antarctica. No, false. Wow, that's four for four. I honestly, I think it's ironic because it's called Antarctica. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. Uh, so that you won the game. I didn't even do anywhere near as close as you did. Thank you, thank um, you. Last question for you and then let you go home. Why should fans experience Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania in IMAX? Well, if I'm making a choice to go to a theater and, and Quantumania is playing in IMAX, I'm gonna go there because uh, we as the filmmakers worked very hard to create this vivid world, the quantum realm, and we want to take you, the audience, down there to experience it. So uh, IMAX, seeing it on this massive screen with beautiful sound, that, that's, that's the way to do it. I'm excited for people to see it. I loved it. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you.